so good to so, see so many of my brothers out here today, and we bless the Lord for you, and we have pastors in the midst, and thank God Pastor Evers and the pastor over here, and any other pastor, am I missing anybody? No, we got some ministers here, but the Lord is good, worthy of all the praise. Brother Joel, our ministry coordinator, our worship leader, God is good. And today we're going to be talking about our fallen, and I can't or can get up. The choice is yours. Let's pray. Father, we love you and praise you, and we thank you and we honor you. For you alone, Lord, are worthy of all the praise. Have your way, God. You're blessed already, but have your way continuously in Jesus' name. Amen. Those same two scriptures in the New English Translation read like this. The Lord grants success to the one whose behavior he finds commendable. Even if he trips, he will not fall headlong, for the Lord holds his hand. That whole idea about falling headlong, bursting your head open, you're good for nothing. You remember what Judas did? After, you know, he burst, and you know, after you do that, you know, there's, you, there's no coming back. So, so the scripture's trying to let us know that we will fall, but it will not be fatal falls. Okay? And in the, in the, in the, uh, New Life Version, it says, The Lord grants success to the one whose behavior he finds commendable. Even if he trips, he will not fall headlong, for the Lord holds his hand. The New Living Translation, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Even when we go off track, because we belong to him, he delights in the details of our lives because the whole idea of him directing our steps, that means we are in submission to him, that even though we might be off track, since we're submitted, we can get back on track because we're not only submitted, we're listening. Amen. Oh, my God. Listening for God. Though they stumble, they will never fail, for the Lord holds them by the hand. They will not be a failure. Oh, my God. See, somebody already told some of us that we're failures. But see, that was based on their ideology. That wasn't based on what God said. It wasn't based on the Word of God. It's not based on a blood-washed brother. It's based on what they think they see and what they think they know. I tell folk, don't write the book on me. Don't write the last chapter yet because God ain't finished. How are you going to write the final chapter on my life and God's not through with me yet? Please be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. You might not like what you see on the outside, but I tell our folks, God is an internist. He's working on the inside that shows up on the outside. That's the way God works. Most of you have seen that commercial. There's a commercial on television. There's an older woman who lives by herself, and on this particular day, she falls, and she can't get up. She can't move, nor can she reach the telephone up on the wall. She's in so much pain, she can't even get out a good holler. So she has fallen, and she can't get up. But eventually, a family member does find her and help her. But the commercial is for a product called Life Alert. I come to let my brothers know today, we are Life Alert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are Life Alert. Because the lives of our children, the lives of our church, the lives of the people in our family are attached to our lives. See, when we talk about headship, we talk about being the head of the family, that is a responsibility that you've got to be ready for. Because it actually has within it the whole idea of being a provider and a protector and a praying man. Lord have mercy. This woman falls and she can't get up and the commercial says, if she had life alert, if she had the little bracelet that she could wear on her arm, she could have pressed the button and talked to somebody and they could have gotten her some help. I said, brothers, I don't want us to be like the lady with no help. Brothers, we do have help. We got the best help that anybody could have, and that's help from God. Amen. God, if you want to be helped, God will, in fact, help us. But if you already got going on, he can't help you. So you got, see, 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 you got to be humble. Many of us as men feel like, feel like that woman in the commercial, falling and can't get up because somebody always talk about you. Anybody been in a situation, every time you mess up, that's when you hear them. But if you do something good, that's what you're supposed to do. You can't get a balance out that day. You can't get a balance. They did no improvement. That's what you're supposed to do, you know. But when you do something wrong, they're all on you and everything. But see, you know, the truth of the matter is that you do have help and you can get up. 
The question is, do you want to get up? And do you want to be helped? Right. Some of us, we can get in our little zones and we stay there. Nobody, don't nobody mess with me. No. Do you want to get up and do you want to help? Do we want to be that godly man that God has called us to be? If you and I want to be men and young men and my young brothers that are here today that God has called us to be, then we need to take a closer look at our scripture for today, Psalm 37, 23, and 24. Number one, what is a good man? Well, G-O-O-D, good, that word good is not even translated in Hebrew. But if you take the O out of good, all about yourself, you'd be a God man. A good man is a godly man. Take the O out. Some folk are all about themselves, all only focus. Take that other O out. You'd be, the good man is a God man. And a godly man is a man who has purpose, a man who has destiny, a man who has integrity, a man who has humility, willing to die to himself, has a spirit of obedience and a spirit of excellence. So, see, a, a godly man, turn to Psalm 1. There's a Psalm 1 man. Turn to Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. That's a godly man. I know you know what it is, but sometimes it's good to hear it again. Sometimes it's good to be reminded of who we really are. Amen. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. And you've got to believe this. Blessed is the man, King James Version, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now that is a good godly man. That's what a godly man is. Has purpose and destiny. You're going somewhere. That's a lot of times we're the mighty men of valor conference. It's a lot of times our wives or our girlfriends don't want to follow us, so we ain't going nowhere. It's hard to follow somebody ain't doing nothing. They ain't going nowhere. We just standing still. That's why they get ahead of you. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't going nowhere. But you got to be about something. You got to have a purpose and a destiny. You got to have a goal. It's okay if the goal changes. It's okay if God, if once you reach it, if God increases the goal, but you got to be doing something. You got to have something going on in your life. And, and God's got to be evident in your life, not just on Sunday. Being a godly man is seven days a week and 24 hours a day. And you got to own up to your mess. When we mess up, own up to it. Don't rationalize it. Don't try to make it right. If it ain't right, go to the Lord. I'm talking about godly men. Men that want to be godly. Men, men, men that, that, that want the spirit of the living God to, to be in them and to be on them. And not afraid to worship. And not afraid to go to church. And not afraid to tell another brother about the goodness of the Lord. It ain't sissy. It's real. Oh, my God. What are the steps of a good man? Those are the steps that God has for that man. My walk is different from this pastor's walk and this pastor's walk and from your walk. But we all men of God and, we all, and they all pass. I'm pastor too. But our walk's not the same. But all our walks, all our steps are ordered by God. Oh, my, my, my. That's why I thought we fall down, but we get up. Because what, 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 the, what the Scripture is trying to show us is that the roads that we travel, we are imperfect, working towards perfection. And we're going to do the best we can, but every now and then we're going to stumble. But since our intention is to be right and not be wrong, we won't fall down and hit our head and mess everything up. Because the Lord upholds us. The Lord delighteth in us. The Lord knows us. The Lord loves us. The Lord cares about us. And he's that cushion for us. In other words, don't be afraid to fall. God's got you. Amen. Don't be afraid not to know, but go find out. Amen. Don't be afraid to be wrong, but learn how to repent. If you cry, you're still a man. If you cry in front of your wife, you're still a man. If you cry in front of your daughter, you're still a man. Because you got emotion. If you get angry, you got emotion. But the steps of the good man are ordered by God because the, the steps of a good man or God man is the position of submission, Lord, I submit to you. It's hard for us as men to submit to another man. But there's no greater man. <laughs> Amen. So who are you going to submit to? 
So we got to give up our will to the man. So God can do exactly what he needs to do in our life. Our steps are ordered by him. So if you're in God and you're in God's will and something goes crazy, don't throw everything in. Don't give up. Don't leave the church. Don't leave your ministry. Don't think the anointing left you. It's a, you're on training ground. If you never had no bad, how are you able to praise God for good? Be willing to go through something to get something. Be willing to go through so you can get through. You got some folk, when they come in ministry or they come to church, they want to go straight to the top. They ain't been through nothing yet. You need to go through something first. Don't be afraid of the pain. Because God got you. That's good word right there. God got you. You got to go through some stuff to get to some stuff. What do you think surgery is about? When they cut you, that don't feel good. But after you heal, you got the scar, but you don't have the disease, and you don't have the pain. You got the gain. But if you won't be about nothing, you're not going to push it. See, in order to be about something, you got to push it. And some of us live close to the edge in the world and get in church don't want to, live, don't want to push it for the Lord. You got to be able to push that thing for the Lord. You got to take some risk in the Lord. He got you. Lord, I don't know, man. Lord, I really don't know, man. I don't know about that. I don't know what they're going to say. What did the Lord say? Amen. We too stuck on what folks say. And what did God call you to do? All of us in here got some junk in the trunk. But what did God say? God said, I got your junk. Will you just move forward and do what I called you to do? Go ahead and make that phone call. Go ahead and tell that brother you sorry. Go ahead and tell that, that sister you sorry. Go tell your baby mama whatever you got to tell your baby mama in the name of Jesus so you can get your life. Awesome, Steps of good man are ordered by the Lord. Because the, the, the God man walks not after the flesh but after the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you might not get a whole lot of folks hanging around you cheering you on. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You got the main cheerleader up in heaven. Say, go on with it. I got you. Go on with it. And see, you got to move towards it because in my life, if I move towards what God told me, he begins to show me more and more. Anybody uh, old like me, remember the old, uh, you know, you, you used to have the little, yeah, the little, you show little video pictures or whatever you call in the little, in the carousel, and you click it and it go around and you have to focus it. And you try to say, next picture, next picture. God said, you ain't got that yet. You talking about next picture. Next picture. You just got license. You ain't got the next picture. How you'll be licensed on Sunday and the bishop on Monday? See, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. But they that wait upon the Lord. Don't get caught up in titles. Get caught up in what God's calling you to do. Don't get caught up in the title now. Get caught up with God and told you, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Which actually means that I don't care what the enemy is trying to do. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because when you got your mind made up, when you got your mind determined, you're going to do what you need to do. Because when I was in the world, when I made my mind up, I was going to do that. I did that. Why did I come in the church and get sanctified and get saved? And all of a sudden, I ain't got no determination. Man, God takes our personality and sanctifies that thing, man. Yes, he will. He will do that for us. He'll take whatever it is we use in the world and sanctify it. But you've got to be ready to be a man of God. Can't be afraid. Can't, 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 can't you know, be cowing down and stuff. Can't, can't be, I don't know, not shy. Knock it off. Because I catch you somewhere, you ain't shy doing other stuff. <laughs> you ain't shy robbing that woman. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus. But, you know, that the steps of a good man walk by faith, not by sight. Romans 8, you know, you walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. And we could do that. You got to be able to do that. And you can't turn it on and off. It is a daily thing. You know, well, I know we turn it up on Sunday. But we got to do this every day. And the more we do this, the better we get at it. The more we listen to God, the better we get at this thing. We're striving towards perfection. If I'm making the same mistakes I made 15 years ago, ain't nothing wrong with God. Something wrong with me. Come on. Come on. Learn how to break that habit. Break it. You know, Monday, you know, first week, get the H off. That's a bit. You get the H off habit, you got a bit. Following, I'm going to wipe out the A. I have a bit. 
Third week, I get that B out. I got it, you know. But I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Come on. That's what you got to do. You got to be wiping that stuff away. Erasing it. Because what I do understand is when the mess gets out, then God can come in. We ask for the anointing of the Lord God. Said, I don't have nowhere to anoint. I have nowhere to pour the oil of the anointing in your life. You got too much junk in there. If you would just come clean and just get rid of some stuff and let me purge you, then I can use you. We got too many men coming in the church. God said, take me as I am. So God said for me to take you as you are, but he wants to work on you as you are. We got a lot of excuses for our stuff, man. All and then I can't get up. You don't want to get up. You lay there on the floor. Wait for somebody to come get you. Not falling and I can get up. Stop being embarrassed. Stop worrying about what folk gonna say. It's one thing about God. God will erase your past and somebody else will write it up on the blackboard. But chalk has erases too. And because they wrote it up there doesn't mean it's still true. How many people know folks still talking about stuff I did eight, ten years ago? It's not even true anymore. God already took care of it. I can't get caught up in, in all that stuff you're talking about. I'm sorry. Amen, oh, y'all know Pastor Carpenter. He does, he that. You're right. I'm striving toward perfection. I'll make some mistakes, but I own up to them. Right. That's what makes the enemy mad. You're going to own up to the stuff that, that you do. And some stuff you ain't done. But I can't waste no time trying to prove I didn't do it. Oh, Lord. You can get caught up in trying to figure, trying to prove yourself. God, God called me. You know who I am. All he says, don't abuse the fact that I called you. But why do good men fall? We fall because we're striving towards perfection. And the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. The enemy will come with all kinds of stuff, but it's not going to destroy us. That's what that song was about. We fall down, but we get up. So many times people fall out because we're not aware. We need to be aware, spiritually aware. We're in spiritual warfare. The enemy is trying to pull us down. The enemy is not present. The enemy will use your wife. The enemy will use your sons. The enemy will use your daughter. The enemy will use the church. The enemy will use the folk closest to you. The enemy will use your deacons. The enemy will use your assistant minister, your assistant pastor. The enemy will use your ministry leaders to get all up in your world and mess you up. you got to begin to be able to have a spirit of discernment. And when you have a spirit of discernment, you don't go around trying to destroy everything. You go in trying to correct stuff, trying to rectify stuff, trying to, trying to reprimand, trying to do stuff decent and in order because you don't want to tear up everything. And sometimes I look in the mirror, the enemy is in me. Know what your stuff is. Know where your buttons are. Everybody point the finger. Everybody point the finger. But no, own up to your stuff. That's how we grow. Okay, Lord, I know, I know, I know, I know, Lord, that's me. I got to work on that, Lord. That's, that's why that turned out that way. Help me, Lord. Learn how to be a praying man. Stay in prayer. I don't care what it is. Stay in prayer for God to have his will and his way in your life. Good men fall because it's not because their eyes are not on God. It's because they're trying to achieve for the Lord. They're excited about God having their hands on them. So, so that's why the, the psalmist says, uh, order my steps in your word, O Lord. Amen. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I found that only works if, if you're telling the truth. If I'm just in a scripture quoting contest, <laughs> if it ain't here, <laughs> it is just here. The word of God works when it's in you. Hallelujah. It works when it's in you. That's when the word of God works. God don't need nobody walking around, you know, spouting all scripture and not applying it. It's applicable. You ever stand up and tell somebody what they need to do? And God has not spoken to you about what you need to do? Oh, humility comes in. Humility comes. So you got to be humble because in, 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 God, in, God's, in, in God's economy, uh, low is high. She said if you, were, if you would just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due time. And when God exalts you, can't nobody tear you down. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. I don't care what kind of trick they might say. Whatever. They cannot tear you down because God has put you in a place and they can't tear you down. you got to remember promotion cometh neither from the east or the west or the south promotion coming from the north so stop playing politics in the church and just go and let God be God and whatever God called you to do find them what God called you to do and do exactly what God called you to do and get that anointing get that understanding study that word get in that word study that word know what the word says because heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of God shall stand we are word men godly men are word men anybody oh I, I don't have my bible 
I don't have the problems you had on your phone, but you don't have no Bible. You don't have it on your phone. You don't have no word. How does God help the good man? God orders his steps. See, that's what happens when you know God's ordering your steps. You don't get all upset when things don't go right. Because all hope ain't lost. God, you got your hand in it. So I said, Pastor, every time I see you, talking about you doing good. I said, that's because I know where to register my complaints. I'm not going to take no extra stuff with me, man. But, hey, when, when the trash man comes and, and I block, I put it all out, Doc. But when I talk to God, I give him everything. I learned not to trust myself with it. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. and all thy ways acknowledge, he will direct thy path. And what God is trying to get us to see, get us to understand, is just give him everything and trust him in it. That's walking by faith and not by sight. Sometimes you won't be able to see it. You can't see it in the natural. For the natural man receives not the things of God because the spirit is discerned. But you can see it in the spirit. You can see yourself being something that you're not right now because God is ordering your steps. That's what this whole thing is about. God is speaking to you. God is calling you. God is speaking to your life. And you don't know, you don't see anything in your house that look like what he showed you. Good. you got to trust God to get something like that. Because you don't see nothing around you that you can hold on to. Yeah, Lord, I know what you're doing because I got this right here in my desk drawer. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, I got that. God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to take you to a place that you don't think you don't you belong. That's the problem with us. God shows us stuff, and we don't, we don't think we can do it. We don't think we can be it because we've been beat down. We've been told we're not this, told we're not that. We can't deal with rejection. It's time for us to get up all that stuff that's been blocking us from being godly men and say, Lord, here it is. I don't live with this stuff too long. This stuff has changed my personality. It's changed my direction. It changed my purpose. And it changed my destiny. And I ain't going nowhere. And I'm tired of not going anywhere. My wife upset with me because I ain't going nowhere. My kids upset with me because I ain't going nowhere. The church is upset with me because I ain't going nowhere. But heaven is upset with me because I ain't going nowhere. God is saying to us today, my brother, I'm so glad you're here. You can get up. He said, you don't, you don't have to reach the phone. No, you do have to press life alert. Come on, come on. But you need to be on life alert. Right. What you got to do is call his name. Glory. Don't be ashamed to call his name. Don't be ashamed Glory. to call him. Don't be ashamed to let folks know who you belong to. Don't, don't even worry about it. God's got you. He helps the good man. The Lord delights in the good man's way. The Lord is, upholds him and sustains him. While everybody else is talking about you, God said, I got you. Don't even worry about it. God said, Because all you got to do is repent. And God said, I got you. While everybody else is trying to talk about what you did, God forgave you and cleaned you up, and you back on the path. Wow. But you got to be able to speak this to yourself. You got to believe this. You got to learn how to go to the Lord for yourself. You can't always keep going to your path. Pastor, what do you think the Lord is telling me? He's telling you to come to Him for yourself sometimes. Got folk, got folk praying for you. Ain't praying for yourself. Uh, Pastor, I need you to pray for him when you go in prayer. I need you to pray about this situation. And then you go back in the same situation. You're not even praying for yourself. You got me praying for your situation, but you're going back to the situation because you really want to be out that situation. You just want some prayer on the situation so you don't want God to kill you in that situation, but you ain't ready to get out of that situation. So instead of you going into prayer for yourself, you're going to have me praying for you out of a situation you don't even want to get out of. But it's good to have some prayer about a situation I shouldn't be in. What are we doing? Somebody said, Pastor, how come so many women in the church? Because the men they ain't real. Right. Pastor, you got the women doing everything. But where the heck were you? I had to watch the Eagles. <laughs> we don't what the brother to do. We got to run God's house. We got to run God's house. Well, you don't want to run God's house. We're lazy. We don't want to study the Word. We don't want to come out. We don't want to do this. We don't want that. But we men of God. Have a men's day. Pastor, we red, red, red ties. <laughs> Man, I walk all around for one day, one Sunday. I got you in church. And you still don't know who God is. We celebrate nonsense instead of celebrating the reality of our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came that he might change our lives. We know what's going on in the world. We know about racism, discrimination, all that kind of stuff. But I got a man named Jesus that can get all up in there and begin to show us how to walk this walk and talk this walk, how to live this thing out so we can be successful, so that we can be successful in ministry so other folks, we can send out the lifeline so other folks won't be dying and won't be killing each other. God wants us to send out the lifeline, but you can't send out what you don't have. How you going to tell me about the Lord and living a life for God and you look like you dying? You ain't got no joy. You ain't got no peace. You come and invite me to the church as you don't talk the church down and talk the back down. Come on and visit. Visit for what? Amen. Amen. See, real men come to each other and talk about stuff. That's what real men do. Look at that. They kind of cut me what you say. Real men can do that. Men of God can do that. But all that other stuff, that stuff ain't going to work. But I come to tell you, because of what Jesus did at Calvary, you too can get up. Consider your every fall, your good Friday, and your every getting up, your resurrection. Even though we fall, we can get up. We serve a God not of a second chance, but the God of another chance. Somebody said, I'm so glad that Jesus Lifted me. Somebody else said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me safe. Am I? God has called us, my brothers, that we might be godly men. God said he does not want to hear us saying, I've fallen and I can't get up. He wants to hear us saying, I've fallen. And I can get up. Why can you get up? Because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And everything that you and I will go through in our lives cannot blow God's mind. You cannot mess God up. You don't have God up in heaven scratching his head. God said, no, because I sent Jesus that die on the cross for you, everything that you come against, everything that will surround you, everything that will try to destroy you, that's exactly what Jesus came for. He took all that stuff up on the cross and he put it in the tomb. And after he took care of all that early resurrection morning, he got up with our new lives, with our godly lives in his hand. God has saved you in our day because Jesus got up. And because he was tempted like we were, because he became flesh, because he got up, you can get up. Because when you get up like Jesus did, you get up burdenless because he took the sting and the death and the power of sin from our lives that we might be victorious. The lady on the commercial said, I've fallen and I can't get up. But the brothers, the men of God said, I've fallen. And I can't get up because my steps are ordered. One of the songs, order my steps. My steps are ordered by the Lord. And even though I might fall, it won't be fatal because the Lord upholdeth, the Lord sustains me in everything. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah.